Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. It's kind of soupy out here, but anytime you're out at the range, you know it's going to be a great day. And with that being said, Mike and Lisa, thank you so much for allowing me to come out to Tallgrass Shooting Sports and be able to bring you guys these videos. In addition to that, I want to say thank you to Jim from Frying Monkey Gunworks because he's my FFL that was able to help me get this in my hands. So thank you so much, Jim. I really do appreciate it. Links to their organizations are down in the description below. With that being said, if you guys think that I have earned it, I would appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel and uh, hitting that bell icon for notifications to make sure that you guys are picking up all the different videos that I have coming out. All right, so let's jump into it. We're talking about the Zestava Arms USA M85, and this is actually going to tick two blocks off of my firearms wish list because not only is it a crink off style AK pistol, but is also chambered in 556. And that's one of the things that I'm super excited for. Now this is just going to be kind of a once over, kind of talk about why you would want to pick up one of these and then talk naturally the goods and the bads. Uh, this is what I try to do most of the time. So let's just jump right on into it and talk about why would you want to pick up a crink off style AK, regardless of what it's chambered in, and then why would you also want to pick up one in 5.56? First and foremost, uh, with this being a pistol, with it having a shorter overall length, uh, maneuverability in a CQB environment, home defense type of situation, is going to be a lot better than a 16 or a 20 inch AR or even a AK. So that is uh, something that I really do like about this. The, uh, the compactness of this is really, really good and um, I can easily move around corners with this. It's something I really do like. The next thing is uh, it is chambered in 5.56 so that it allows me to really condense down the different types of calibers that I have in my arsenal. Uh, I don't have to have 5.45 and 7.62 and 5.56. I can just kind of slowly start whittling that down. Since I am from America and 2.23, 5.56 is very predominant here, that makes it a lot easier. Finally, unfortunately right now we are dealing with the COVID situation. People are really stressed out, kind of panicking. Uh, there's been a run on firearms and, um, you know, heaven forbid any type of civil unrest would actually pop up. But if it does, um, you know, the fact that you are running an AK, a reliable platform in 5.56 makes it a little bit easier for you to kind of scrounge for ammunition. And I think that's probably one of the more important things. Not only are you going to have a solid platform, which AKs are known for their reliability, but also you're going to be able to easily find the American, the American caliber. Um, hopefully you're not picking it up off of the ground, <laughs> which uh, probably implies what you think. Anyway, so that's kind of the reasons why uh, I would pick one of these up. And let's talk about kind of the overview uh, about what we've got going on. First and foremost, uh, this is going to be a 10 inch barrel and it's going to be a chrome lined cold hammer forged barrel. And that's kind of a departure from the Zestava ZPAP. And I've got a review on that one right here if you guys are interested, but that does not have a chrome lined barrel. It's just a cold hammer forged barrel. So uh, that's kind of an upgrade. And I really do like that because not only is it a little bit of an upgrade, but it also is going to extend the life of the barrel with that chrome lining. So good on you ZPAP, uh, or Zestava, excuse me, for, for doing that. Um, up here, we've got the uh, booster, which is pretty standard for um, crink off style AKs. And what this does is this actually is going to capture some of the gases to help with reliability in that dwell time. As you can see, the gas block is right here. The end of the barrel is right here. And with 5.56, five, uh, you're going to need a little bit longer dwell time than about an inch to uh, ensure that the operation, the action of the firearm works reliably. Now, this is really standard for 5.45 setups, but uh, it works with 5.56 as well. I've had zero issues when it comes to reliability on feeding or chambering, uh, but I, I will say that I have had a couple failure to fires. I think that's on me, uh, not necessarily the platform. I haven't cleaned it. I just pulled it right out of the box and started shooting. So, but the booster here, uh, like I said, 
capture some of those gases to ensure that it gets pushed back into the firearm, making it a little bit more reliable. And that's something I really do like because you can purchase this AK pistol without the booster. All right, so moving back, we have Zasava's wood hand guards on here. And this is something I really do like because uh, these, these really dark, uh, stained wood handguards are super nice. Not only that, they are a very high quality American oak uh, that they install here in the United States. And that's kind of a little bit of an upgrade. There's other AK manufacturers that won't do that. They'll have uh, cheaper wood. And as the firearm heats up, so does that wood, you know, it conducts heat um, because it is thinner and it's just not a very enjoyable shooting experience. Not the case with not only the M85, but also the ZPAP as well. They have that really nice American oak wood on it. Uh, polymer pistol grip here. I'm not a big fan of this. It, fe it feels comfortable uh, and it works just fine for everybody, I'm sure. But I, I kind of like the, um, the Bakelite kind of version of the pistol grip. Just me, it's a personal preference thing, but this works real well, uh, feels good. And then on the back side, we have the SBA3 from SB Tactical. They went ahead and add that on as well uh, when I ordered it. Like I said, you can just pick up this without the brace and without the booster. Uh, if you're interested in saving some money, maybe do it yourself on down the road, something to that fact. But you know, if you're already gonna pick it up, you might as well put them both on. We're gonna have standard crink off sights on here, uh, but this is something I really do like with this setup is because on the rear sight, you have a, uh, the ability to flip this rear sight back and forth between two different apertures. One is set up for 400 meters and one is set up for 200 meters. So that's something I really did like about it. And then on the front, you have your standard AK style sight as well, but you also have a white dot flip up sight that you can flip up for CQBs type stuff. So that's something I really did like as well. All right, so let's dive into the heart of the firearm. We're gonna be talking about the receiver and the internals. First and foremost, the receiver is going to be a 1.5 millimeter stamp receiver, and that's going to give it a little bit more rigidity uh, on this platform. That's very akin to the OPAPs and some of the older uh, Yugo style AKs that are out there, uh, but that's something that's really, uh, really kind of cool. Something that I really liked that they would, you know, sure up this receiver a little bit more. And then, as you can see here, it does have the bulge front trunnion or the RPK trunnion uh, installed in here as well. Now, that is a bit of a point of contention with a lot of people. They may feel that this is going to add a lot of weight to the platform, it's kind of one of the cons to this. It does add a lot of weight. This weighs in empty at uh, 6.6 pounds, so it is a little bit heavier for a pistol, uh, but you also have to take into consideration that 5.56 is going to be running a little hotter than 5.45 by 39. So there's gonna be an added pressure difference there. Not much, but just a little bit. And uh, I kind of like the idea of having the reassurance of having a thicker receiver with that beefier front trunnion. Does it need it? I've talked to Jim Fuller about that uh, when I was out at SHOT Show. He says, no, it really doesn't. But it's there if you want it. So just keep that in mind as well. The uh, disassembly on this is pretty standard for an AK, but it does have the hinged dust cover, which is pretty nice. And then the internals is going to be the uh, corrosion resistant hard nickel molly steel bolt carrier and bolt as well. So that's something I really do like. So just like the ZPAP, the trigger group is also going to be installed in the factory in Serbia before it's imported into the United States. And that's something, like I mentioned it with the ZPAP that I really do like, is that it really kind of keeps everything with the firearm consistent. So that's another thing I really do like. All right, so let's talk about the uh, pros and cons on this. Uh, pro is, like I said, very compact design, allows you to really work yourself away around corners and stuff like that for home defense. Um, it's using a common caliber here in the United States, another great pro. Uh, corrosion resistance on the carrier. It's raining out here uh, today, so all I have to do is go home, wipe it down, it should be good to go. Um, and if you have you know, corrosive ammo, 
that's a thing, uh, <laughs> it will uh, help protect the uh, internals a little bit as well. Now, let's talk about the biggest con when it comes to this setup. And uh, as much as I really love shooting this, I really have had a lot of fun. And I think it's going to be uh, my second favorite AK to the Zestava ZPAP. But um, the biggest problem that I have with this setup is going to be the magazines. This is the uh, Zestava magazine that comes with it. It runs flawlessly. I've had zero issues with feeding. Um, no issues whatsoever from the magazine that I can tell so far. But I did call Zestava and ask them specifically, will this take Galil mags? The answer is yes, it will fit Galil mags, but they recommend using their magazines. I went ahead and bought uh, two Galil mags myself, and unfortunately I don't have video of it. I forgot to... to uh, to bring them with me to the range today, and I didn't film it the last time, but one Galil mag worked intermittently. Uh, I would be able to fire a few rounds and then it would jam, and then fire a few more rounds and it would jam. The other Galil mag wouldn't work at all. In fact, all it was doing was feeding rounds directly into the front trunnion and jamming the projectile into the casing itself. So, it, could you find Galil mags that it would work? Yeah, you probably could, but how many mags are you going to have to buy to find that right combination? In addition to that, the Zestava um, magazines are running about $39, $40, bucks, so they're a little expensive. So if you're trying to set yourself up for, you know, having three, four, or five magazines, you could be spending a lot of money just on magazines. So that's kind of the biggest downside to this. But... It has been a lot of fun to shoot. It's it's extremely reliable, and like I said, uh, having a common caliber with an AK platform really does help me a lot uh, because I'm out here shooting ARs as well, and I don't have to worry about dragging two cans of ammo up to the bench. Just got the one, I can run this, I can run my AR, life is good. Let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment section down below. Would a 5.56 AK be right for you? And if it is, would the Zestava M85 also be the one you would go with? Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below. That's really all I got this time for you guys. This is just the first look at the M85. Plenty of more videos coming out uh, here in the future on this because like I said, this is gonna be one of my new favorites. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys later. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Bye, y'all.